Hey everyone, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go, and it's been way too long, but we finally have part three on how to use false color. If you haven't seen the first two, pause this video and go check those out. I'll put links to both of them in the description below. Now, getting right into it, the first thing that we wanna do is find the image that we wanna use as our reference. I really like this shot here from the social network DP'd by Jeff Cronenwealth. Once we've loaded that into Resolve, we'll use the tools that I've showed you in part two to get the ratios and light levels. I'm gonna be using the IRE scale for this example. Picking apart the shot, we can see that the key is coming from the top because it gets darker as we go lower on his face. And I'm gonna say that the key light is around 50 IRE because this bright part on his nose and this area on his forehead. And then the fill side, which is really just his chin and neck area, is around 15 IRE for a ratio of 3.3 to one, or we can just round this and say three to one. And then the talent's key, again at that 50 IRE, to the background at a five to 10 IRE, is a ratio of five to one. Now, the ratio is important if we want to expose our shot differently than the reference image. As long as we keep that ratio, we can over or underexpose the image to fit the mood we're looking for. But in this case, I really like the exposure, so we'll be using the same IRE levels when lighting our shot. Now, let's jump on set and take a look. Just a quick note before we get into it, when you're using false color, you want to make sure you're using it on an image that is either has a LUT applied to it or is graded. If you're using it on log footage, then the contrast is not going to be the same once you get in and actually apply that grade in post-production. We're using the Flanders Scientific Monitor and we have their Loom Color Exposure Check. This is basically their version of false color. Then we have our Red Epic W, which is outputting Red Gamma 4, and that's pretty much a color corrected log so that we're getting something a little bit closer to what we're actually gonna see in the final product. When we were analyzing the reference image, we were looking at what kind of light source they were using and we figured it was a big overhead light source. To make this, we used a flex one by one panel and then we're shooting it through a big four by six diffusion to get that big soft source dropping and giving that really soft light over his face. So if we look at the monitor with how this light is set up currently, we're getting way too much light on the top of his head and on the bridge of his nose there. It's hitting almost 80 IRE. So what we're gonna do to get that down to the 50 IRE that we need is just dim it with the dimmer box here. And that's the great thing about LEDs is you can just dial them in to right where you want them. And right about there is looking good. But we're getting a little bit too much shadow under his chin and in his neck area. If we remember the reference image, it was about 15 IRE. So we're gonna to wanna to try and lift that a little bit. There's a couple ways you can do this. The way I'm gonna do it is by raising up the light get it to about there, just under the ceiling. And then if we look at the false color again, you can see we lost a lot of that exposure on the top of his head. So we're just gonna brighten it back up to get it to that 50 IRE level. It's gonna be about there. Now that's looking a lot better in his neck. We're getting a little bit higher lifted in that 15 IRE range. So now that we have that good ratio on his face like we saw in our reference image, the other number we were looking at was the IRE level of the background. Now we want it to be in that 10 to five range, so pretty dark and pretty low. Right now it's looking like it's in that 10 to 15 range. So what we can do to dim this down is I'm gonna walk over here and we can just bring in a big black floppy and block off this back. I already have one set up, so I'm just gonna spin it around. And if you watch the loom color or the false color, you can see me bring in that black and darken up the background. So right about there looks pretty good. Lock that down. And that's really how easy it is to take an image that you like, analyze it using the false color plugin in Resolve, and then take that into your own work. If you look at our reference image versus the image that we shot, we got it pretty darn close with only using one small light source. I hope you enjoyed this little series on false color. If you got anything out of it, hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more, and leave comments and questions down below. I'll see you in the next one.